We've been having a think about what the mountain bike of the future might look like. Ever since we saw these designs from Daniel Gunnison, who likes to create mashups of different bikes, we've been inspired to come up with our own dream mashup concept bike of the future. And this is it. Our bike follows current trends in geometry, which are led by the likes of Nikolai and Paul, but followed up by more mainstream brands like Transition and specialized with their Stump Jumper Evos. Our bike's got a super long wheelbase, a low bottom bracket height, and a really slack head angle. I've always found that with full suspension bikes, slamming the seat forwards on the rails to effectively steepen your seat angle always makes the bike climb better. So our bike has a really steep seat angle to compensate for the long suspension, which sags back into its travel when you're going uphill. Talking of suspension, the elephant in the room has to be that linkage fork for which we've taken inspiration from the Structure SCW1. Linkage forks certainly aren't a new thing, but there have been a few designs put out very recently. Firstly from Structure, but also from Motion France, and also Trust Performance. Now we haven't actually ridden any of these forks yet, though we will be riding some soon, but they do have some theoretical advantages. Firstly, because they articulate on bearings, there should be less friction than a telescopic fork. Secondly, they can be designed to use the brake torque to resist brake dive so that the fork stays higher in its travel under braking. And thirdly, they can be designed such that the trail, which affects the stability of the steering, doesn't decrease so much when the fork does dive. In the case of the structure fork, that's because the head angle actually slackens relative to the mainframe as the fork compresses. And in the case of the truss performance, the fork offset actually gets shorter as the fork compresses. And in both cases, that's to maintain a similar amount of trail even when the bike pitches forwards due to braking or hitting a bump. So in theory, there's a lot going for them, so these might just be the forks of the future. As for the rear suspension, we've gone for a high pivot suspension design with an idler wheel routing the chain up past the pivot. The main advantage of this is that you can have a bike that pedals well but still has virtually no pedal feedback through the chain. Unlike with linkage forks, this is a concept that's very well proven. Four out of the last seven downhill World Cups in the men's category have been won on a bike with a high pivot and idler design. To further improve suspension sensitivity, our bike has internal gearing. So by taking the weight of the gearing off of the rear wheel and onto the mainframe, you increase the sprung to unsprung mass ratio, which as we found in a previous video where we strapped lead weights to the frame, this should improve the suspension sensitivity by lightening up the back wheel, adding weight to the frame, you increase the suspension's ability to move out of the way. The other advantage of this, of course, is reduced maintenance because you no longer have a derailleur hanging off the side of the bike. And to capitalize on that, we've specified a belt drive just to keep maintenance down. In recent years, we've seen 10 speed, 11 speed, and now 12 speed drivetrains. We've even seen a 13 speed drivetrain from Rotor. So how about we have a continuous spread of gears so you effectively have infinite gearing options. This could take the form of a continuously variable transmission or CVT, which is used in some cars. That means you could pedal at exactly the same cadence, irrespective of the speed that you're going. It would also allow you to change gear whilst pedaling hard, which is not something you can do with a gearbox. Rather than strapping lights and GPS devices to your bike with elastic bands like we do nowadays, our bike's got integrated lights as well as a touchscreen display on the handlebar to show you your speed and cadence and power and what have you. We'd also like to see a triathlon style internal water tank like you'd get on a specialized shiv, for example. That way you could drink while you're riding and also you wouldn't have problems with your water bottles getting muddy or falling off in rough terrain. Finally, I think we're gonna see a lot of slightly bigger tires in future. So our bike has a 2.6 inch front tire and a 2.8 inch rear tire. That's combined with a 29 front, 27.5 rear wheel, much like you'd get with a Canyon Spectral on. The idea behind this is to give you a slightly stronger rear wheel with a bit more cushioning from the tire, whilst also having a bit more steering precision up front thanks to the slightly smaller tire. So there you have it, that's our wacky, no holds barred dream bike of the future. No idea if any of it is really feasible in the real world or indeed how much it would weigh if you could make such a bike. But let us know what you think and tell us what your future bike would look like 
in the comments below. And don't forget to like or subscribe.